Well, guys, would you look at that? Last Friday, we just had one of the worst days in the stock market in the entire year of 2022, which is a pretty impressive feat because obviously 2022 has already been one of the worst years for the stock market in the past couple of decades. There's no other reason for that to happen other than j coming out with his hawkish talks about interest rates and inflation. But in this video, I want to share a contrarian perspective to what j discussed on Friday and the next new catalyst that you would really want to pay attention to in the future to really understand the situation around inflation and why I continue to be a buyer of stocks despite all the FUD and the fear. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So the first thing I want to address is what has j Powell told us in his latest meeting around the Jackson Hole conference. Well, the first thing I want to mention is we did indeed see in July some inflationary measures peak, particularly the PCE data came out just on Friday, which showed a year over year rise of only 6.3% in July versus 68 Now, is this something to celebrate on? Not necessarily. This is probably just a sign of inflation peaking. But again, inflation is very sticky, so it might take more time over the next six months or so for this data to come down into the fives and the fours, which is obviously what the Fed wants to reach their target of 2%. But the more important part here is that the consensus estimate for the month over month reading was only 0%, but it actually came in at negative 0.1%. Again, this shows us the rate of inflation is now decreasing, not only the trajectory, but the rate of inflation is starting to decrease. And that is a pretty big development that Obviously, Jay Powell did not discuss in his Jackson Hole speech, and many people are completely forgetting. And so why has Jay Powell ignored this situation? Well, in my opinion, it has nothing to do with financials and the Fed, and it has everything to do with politics. Obviously, we're headed into a midterm election year, and I think Jay Powell wants to be much more aggressive with his tone to tell Americans that he has everything under control, even though we know he just does not. And I'm sure Biden is sitting right behind j Powell, telling him to be more aggressive and give confidence to consumers about bringing down inflation and the government actually doing its job. And that's actually one of the reasons why September and October during midterm election years tend to be pretty poor performances for the rest of the year. But again, that is not breaking my long term bull thesis that 2022 is going to be one of the best times to buy stocks in this entire stock market. As you can see, my portfolio on Friday got absolutely destroyed. But again, I don't care. I see this as an opportunity to buy. I don't panic sell into this kind of selling. I only like to sell my stocks into strength when I see overvaluedness or I see excessive euphoria or the fundamentals change. Yes, there's going to be times when I sell my stocks in the red because the fundamentals have drastically changed. But right now, this market is being driven by macroeconomics and not the fundamentals of these businesses. And this is the absolute wrong time. You should be selling any individual stocks at least, unless you've significantly lost your conviction in that specific company, which is exactly why I continue to be a buyer instead of many people who are being sellers in this kind of very volatile market. But the story doesn't even end there. Another big reason for why being bullish in this kind of market environment will pay dividends is because the overall sentiment is extremely negative right now. Many people are waiting for the Fed to pivot and inflation to come down back to 2% before they start buying stocks. But the reality is by that time, the stock market is going to be indefinitely at all time highs. That is pretty much the story for the market when it's sitting at all time highs. You tell me all the news stories for when the S&P 500 was between November 2020 and September 2021 before all this volatility started. There was basically no bad news that could affect the stock market, even though, yes, the fundamentals were quite poor and they were getting poor because of the heightened inflation and the supply chain issues that were persisting because of the pandemic. But obviously, most retail investors didn't pay attention to that data, right? They just looked at what the price was doing and the price was going up. So they thought it was a good time to buy. Now, if you're a long-term investor and not a short-term trader, then this stuff really does not matter. None of this macroeconomic stuff should matter to you because it always plays out in the end. And right now, we're seeing the exact opposite of that. 
Everybody is extremely bearish when the market's already down over 20% from its highs, which makes me bullish because most of these people are eating into what the media is saying to them, and they've been saying the same thing for the past six months. I mean, you tell me, what did Jay Powell really say in his latest speech that is different from what we've seen in the past? Absolutely nothing. He has been telling us the exact same stuff that he's been telling us for the past six months, only he was a little bit more confident in the way that he was saying, telling this to us. And many people are also dismissing some of the critical components at the very end of his speech, which I'm going to get into right now. But before we do that, I want to quickly mention the fact that core PCE inflation data has actually peaked pretty significantly, and the market is probably not pricing this in just yet. Here's a good look at the month-over-month -month data for PCE, which is obviously excluding energy and food prices, which are obviously driven by oil prices, which by itself are actually also coming down. And so if the stock market is a leading indicator, then this is showing us 2022 is probably going to be a good year to continue to be a buyer of stocks. Now, sure, if we get a new variant, this data will reverse and all of a sudden this will go higher. But again, that doesn't mean you want to stop buying stocks. This is only for if you're a short term trader trying to swing the market overnight and trying to catch some of the shorter term trends. And that's exactly what I'm trying to show you guys. I'm trying to show you that none of this data in the long term is going to matter. But if you're in the short term, at least it still actually pays to be bullish in this kind of environment, even though many people think there's absolutely no light at the end of the tunnel. And for those people that are waiting for the recession to happen and to buy only when inflation comes down, as you can see, the stock market always bottoms well before this pivot actually happens. We saw this in 74 when obviously Paul Volcker raised interest rates and we had very big stagflation situations back then. And we also saw this in the dot-com bubble and even in 2008. As you can see right here, by the time that CPI fell all the way to zero and then reversed into a deflationary period, the stock market had already bottomed just a few months ago. As you can see, if you, if you create a line all the way to the top, this bar correlates with the bottom, which was at a very heightened level for CPI. And it's a very similar situation if you look at what happened here in 2017. The stock market, even when interest rates are going up, has continued to rally higher. Only thing we're seeing right now is that the quantity of inflation is significantly higher back then than back then. But again, also the rate of inflation has been significantly higher than we have ever seen before because this is a pandemic infused inflation. And so the rate of inflation to the downside or deflation could also be just as fast. And that's something many people are simply not understanding. Just like the Fed overestimated the situation or underestimated the situation around inflation in 2021, they're probably overestimating the situation or inflation coming down. But regardless, let's now understand exactly what Jay Powell said at the end of his Jackson Hole speech that many people are completely overlooking, which should be good if you're a long-term investor. The second lesson is that the public's expectations about future inflation can play an important role in setting the path of inflation over time. Today, by many measures, longer-term inflation expectations appear to remain well anchored. That is broadly true of surveys of households, businesses and forecasters, and of market-based measures as well. But that is not grounds for complacency, with inflation having run well above our goal for some time. Well, there you go. That right there was the breakthrough thing many people and the media is completely overlooking which is the fact that break-even inflation rates, which are expectations in five years of what inflation is going to be, are actually significantly lower than they were still five months ago, even with this hawkish talk from the Fed and obviously some of the more inflationary pressures we have seen with the monkeypox outbreak and whatnot in the economy. Guys, this is exactly what we should be paying attention to if you really want to play this macroeconomic game of predicting what inflation is going to be. Right now is a time to be a buyer because of this data right here, which is something not being reflected in the current CPI data. You see, this PCE and inflation data that we're constantly looking at on a day-to-day -day basis is lagging. Instead, as an investor, you should be looking at forward-looking data that's showing us where inflation is going, not where inflation is right now. And that's what most retail investors are making the mistake of. They're constantly focusing on what the media is giving them right now, which is essentially telling you what's the status today instead of what the status is going to be in a couple of months from now. And you're not investing for today, are you? You're investing for tomorrow. 
And as for what are the catalysts you might want to watch for the next couple of months that I'm paying attention to, the main thing I'm going to pay attention to is the fact that September overall is actually going to be a pretty bad year for stocks. Historically, it's always been one of the most trickier years for investors. But again, because this year has been so weird, it could actually flip to the upside. But regardless, if you want to brace for that volatility, some of the main catalysts you want to watch are the Case Home Price Index that's coming out on Tuesday, August 30th, which is going to tell us the situation of the mortgage market and whatnot. And obviously, some of the unit labor, productivity revision, and jobless claims data on September 1st. And that's also going to obviously lead into us the FOMC meeting, which is going to take place on September 20th, which again, I expect a 75 basis rate hike from that which should not be that big of a surprise to the stock market. But again, you never know what's going to happen these days. But as usual, guys, make sure to drop me a thumbs up if you found some value in this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.